Thank you, Shuri. Um, and just one second. <laughs> uh, today, uh, I'm going to have Ma to tell us a little bit out of her expertise because she started off with a master thesis on uh, multi channel marketing, right? Exactly. Uh, multi channel, sure. sure. Yeah. And then maybe, maybe later today she can show us a little video. <laughs> but not on this one. Um, now the topic of the talk is really about all connecting online and offline marketing with a special focus on print mailing, which we've been doing for quite a while. And that's where we give you the broader picture. In the past webinars, etc., we showed you the, the plugin and how to use it, etc. This time we want to talk about more about the concept, about the best practices, etc., and of course about the three use cases. Um, just a word about Lightfire because some don't know really what we're doing. Sometimes we don't even. Uh, we're based in Hanover, Germany. Uh, we're about 30 people. Um, like everybody else, we're looking for good uh, um, people to, to support us, remote or local, free or not, whatever. Um, we kind of specialize on project as platforms, and we do large things like continental and um, others. Um, and same that we do is in uh, online marketing with technical focus there, and we do inbound marketing, whole thing, and of course with Monix. So you can tell that we're focusing on when it comes to tech, we're focusing on the open source stack, and we love to do that with really, really good products, which we have here. Um, yeah, to give you a better understanding what this is about, let me give you a, an example. You may have seen this before, but it's still, I think, telling a good story. Um, and the goal here in this example would be to sell cruises on a winter mountain sail ship. Of course, it's called HMS Morning. Um, the strategy here, the approach is to generate leads through some sort of voucher and a free cocktail when the ship comes to a harbor. So the ship comes to Amber, and we want to get them into a funnel, and so we collect their uh, um, Obviously, we want this to be as worth it, you know, high price, etc. So we want uh, to reduce the no-show rate, uh, and of course, we want to convert them into customers later on. So let's walk through this real quick. This is not one of the use cases. This is just a foundation. That's the form. We need to drive people there, whatever, through uh, posts on the wall or through SEO or social media or whatever. Uh, so people get to the website and uh, sign up for the free drink. What they get is a, an email, regular thing, like this information, or the confirmation and everything. Um, if they confirm it, and only if they confirm it, we send them the voucher, the actual voucher. And this we do in paper for some reasons that we're going to talk about later. Uh, now, voucher has been received. Uh, a bit before the event, we do another channel, it's SMS. Uh, and all that comes with a QR code, and so they can check in at the event, and we can do some follow-up. So that's the sequence. And if you think about this, we're getting back and forth between online and offline all the time. Advertising, we have the web form, we send an email, and then we do send print, send an SMS, we meet people in real life, scan the code, and then they do the follow-up in various ways. So it's a constant back and forth. We ourselves call it call self like for a digital marketing, but of course, this is the whole term of online marketing, so distinction is kind of obsolete. It, it is really crossover. It is important to, to not have two, two islands that do not interact. Uh, what we do want to do is what we learn from online marketing is to measure and adopt, and of course, to come up with smart ideas. A um, little bit of theory, communication, from a modic perspective, uh, can be in various ways. It can be like a 
anonymous visitor on the website, we can communicate to that person through uh, focus items, through dynamic web contents, and sometimes through other means. Uh, you know, in the offline world, there's no direct uh, parallel. Maybe you can say there's a promotion person in, in, in the street who's talking to people, but other than that, uh, interactive is on the website. Uh, anonymous broadcast, yeah, you can, of course, uh, post on social media, you can set up a display in the hotel lobby, and you can do a uh, broadcast in the offline world by putting a poster on the wall. Or TV spots or um, balloons or trams. Um, and then you have the more individual communication that is uh, based on events, well, it's triggered. Uh, so, based on the individual situation of the person, uh, you can send channels like SMS, WhatsApp, social media, uh, and you can use offline things, namely print mailings. Letters, postcards. And then the, the last category would be the same, but not event based, not based on the individual situation, but broadcast. And so, so it's not individual events, but maybe general events like we have something going on, the ship is coming to the harbor, so we send uh, a, a newsletter to people, or we can send letters to a group of people. So how does this now? Uh, drill down to the actual use cases. Uh, if you think, or if you imagine specific cases of tri triggered communications, for instance, from campaigns in mind, uh, one thing could be send a welcome letter to a person or postcard. Another thing would be uh, send a follow up postcard if you do some sort of nurturing, people just do not respond and, and um, you still want to impact. The, other category would be broadcast, as I just said, sent to a large group of people, like you would do with email newsletters. And these are, these are the things that we are going to use in our specific cases. Before we go there, let's reflect on, on why print. What, what's the point in, in following up with print after an email? What's the difference? Uh, isn't that a bad idea? Because it, costs money and emails basically for free. And it's bad for the planet. Uh, but the point of well, the, the argument here is of course that it can help us or our clients to be significantly more successful in their marketing efforts. Um, why is that? One is it's clearly proven that we have much better open rates. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it will probably into spam, that's one thing. <laughs> and and uh, when you receive the postcard, that is the chance that you can take a look at it. Um, and even the conversion rates are better, that's of course because of all the mechanism, mechanisms beyond our development. Uh, it is less short term. An email, uh, you receive it, you act on it immediately, or it's basically forgotten. Whereas a postcard, you can set the Put that on the table or stick it to the fridge, like, like you see in the picture. There's again our uh, voucher. Um, and you will see it for a long time, so it's, it's long, long term. It, it has more than one recipient because everybody in the family will probably see this thing in the free fridge door, whereas an email by definition is only seen by one person. And there are other things like, like legal implications. And EU, uh, where you are allowed to do things in print that you would not be allowed to do in uh, digital communication. Um, after all, of course, this is not for every situation, but it, it, it needs to make sense. So you need to consider the costs, you need to consider the gains. And if that makes sense, then it's worth a try. So let's look at some typical cases where it does make sense. Obviously, whenever you talk about higher values, then higher efforts make sense. There's no brainer, and, and that's specifically true here. And nurturing, of course, is only good for all the buying circle, the cycles. Um, if you have spontaneous uh, sales 
for purchase actions, then that's not printed. But if if you are talking about goods that people think about first and do the research first, etc., like, well, that's exactly where nurturing is good, and that's exactly where paper-based uh, follow-ups may make sense. Return business, of course, uh, and in general, when the industry or the target audience is not yet there, not fully digital, then the uh, target audience. So, and with that, uh, let's look at the by far most important case. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, so let's fill this with a little bit more of content. Um, we start with the first case, which is fashion, a classical B. To see environment. Um, for example, you could use print mailings when there is a new collection launching, so we can send a mail to announce our new collection. Um, we could then send, we could um, select our customers based on their behavior, um, like on the recency, the frequency, or the monetary value they have for us. And then that action. We could individualize the mailing, um, for example, based on their gender. If, let's say, the collection is a male collection of girls, whatever, and then we would send the postcard so it's primarily visual and give them a call, call to action with their QR code and say, hey, be quick, get your piece. Um, and then hopefully, the new, the new collection, yeah, starts quite well. Uh, another example from fashion is that we are opening a new store in a specific town. So we want to use the print mailing to support a brick and mortar store. So obviously we would select the recipients of this mailing based on where they're living. Uh, we would not individualize this print mailing further, send them maybe a postcard uh, with a QR code, for example, and say, hey, here's your free welcome drink. Why a drink and not maybe a discount? Because it makes sense to offer them a drink or something that they can only receive in the store. Um, and this works well. Uh, for all on premise franchises like hotel, restaurants, wellness, and so forth. This does not mean we always offer drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Another example could be a loyalty program, so we could use the print mailing to create and maintain um, the relationship to our customers because we always want to have very close relationship with them. So here our mailing would be based on triggers, so maybe after the first purchase or when the customer reach, reaches a new level in our loyalty program, uh, we would trigger a mailing, a letter or postcard, um, but with no further call to action. And then in e-commerce there are many more cases for um, including print mailing in our marketing strategy, for example, to recover abandoned cards or to reactivate an inactive customer. So here our mailing again would be based on triggers, um, namely on based and would be based on transactional behavior. So if they do a purchase or if they abandon their card without purchasing or if they haven't purchased in a long time, let's say after six months they didn't do a new purchase, okay, let's send them a postcard. So here, this postcard now will be individualized quite strong because it is based on the personal preferences of our um, customer or based on the items he or she had in the card. Now we can send a postcard give them a call to action like a discount code to reactivate our inactive customer. And of course there are more examples uh, like re asking to recommend us to a friend or 
to invite, invite them to events, like the opening store or a new collection comes in. You can also use this for cross-selling, hey, you bought new shoes, I think this handbag would fit as well. Uh, birthday cards, or we could also pitch our USP. Um, for example, if there's a new competitor or a competitor that does some quite aggressively marketing, we could stand up as well and say, hey, did you know what we can? Um, and so be in mind of our customers. I have a question for the audience. Does everybody know what this is in the picture, or is this just a German thing? It's this is kind thing. of Oktoberfest. It's a German thing, we know. <laughs> <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> How Germany is now. You mean a heart? Of course. <laughs> yeah. didn't, didn't happen this year. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. And of course, there are many more cases. Okay, let's leave fashion behind, focus on another topic green energy, solar power, um, which can be B2B, B2C. Um, let's imagine there is a customer who wants to um, get photovoltaics or battery storage for his house or for his company and he is getting a lot of information for this product because it's expensive, it's something that will be on his roof for quite a long time hopefully. Um, so he needs a lot of information and probably he will not only ask one provider for this information, but compare. So, a typical call to action in this scenario would be to provide a configurator, um, for example, on our website, so he, um, he or she could use this configurator to see what it would look like on their house, or what different options there are, and customize the product uh, that would have the perfect fit. Um, the classical approach would then be to send an email to this customer, maybe with a quotation about the product um, of, the, of what the person did in the configurator of the product, or even do a phone call. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a product where customers contact multiple vendors. So the challenge for us is to uh, be special, stand out um, with this print mailing. Um, we, can, we can send an email, but then later we can send this quotation even as a letter, so we are in mind of the customer one more time, and even the longer term. Other regions, but again, in our home regions, this photovoltaic and this whole renewable energy thing is a thing, it's very big. People do that a lot and uh, do a lot of research. For this thing, and you have all these problems that is basically fire and forget. Them. You, you do configure it here, download there, uh, flip through the options there, and, and then you're as a provider, you really want to stick out, and there's not too many options. You always can do a good job online, but if you want to do pull, pull, pull all the strings, uh, then this turned out to be a really good thing, and especially because it's so high value. And then um, let's also have a look at another case, engineering, and here yeah, maybe also having in mind that this industry does not have, or does not might have the highest online affinity. And let's imagine there's a company, uh, they do mechanical engineering, and now they want to um, pitch a new add on digital service, so they want to upsell their, um, their installed products and now um, yeah, they want to make it public and want to inform their existing customers about this new digital service. So what do they do? In the classical approach, they would um, broadcast a print mailing to all their customers and then maybe do some further promotion via email or website and even on classical trade shows, do a phone call or even visits. But now the 
print mailing connected to our online strategy, we can send a custom letter to each client which is based on the machines they are already using and now we can give them the exact right offering based on their products and um, give them even a quotation so that makes this really interesting for them, they already know what it's about, how it fits their existing machines and we can reach them way better uh, instead of just sending a broadcast print mail. And now, uh, Aki will show us how we can do all of this by modeling. Not quite. Uh, would be nice, but we don't yet do quotation through modeling. <laughs> so you, you, in, in, whenever you have complex letters, you need to create those in a separate system and feed back into modeling, obviously. To create a, a quotation plugin in Modic. No, but other than that, of course, to connect the dots and then to, to orchestrate this whole thing. Um, and we're only talking about a slight thing here, and it is specifically about outbound channels, but uh, we, we should also consider, for instance, signals, tracking in other places than just website, etc. And making that all work in a single workflow, that's what more is strong about. Let's talk, uh, think about it. Conceptual foundation, once again, just briefly. Um, how can you implement such a strategy or, or a certain campaign? Of course, you need to figure out what the use case is in the first place. Then you want to design and define the content. So, you, you, let's say you, so you define the use case to be a certain drip campaign, and at one point in the campaign, you want to send paper. So, yeah, what, what is the content? That's the same you have to do with an email. Uh, what is the optics? Uh, yeah, same in email, but of course print optics. And then uh, the dynamic fields, so all the, the data that goes into that for the personalization or customization. Um, that's also part of it. So maybe you want to just give the Let's say the address, for instance, you probably need the address, but you may, you may want to give the gender, you may want to give a certain URL for tracking, or to create a QR code, uh, or you may even want to pass along a PDF or something that uh, goes along with it. Uh, the most important use area is obviously the e commerce. We talked about that briefly in the, in the, passion, in the passion part. Um, with e-commerce, you're in good shape because you have a lot of it already. So, uh, if you think about the details, you have a shop, and then you use Mordic to do better marketing around the shop, and then you use Printmail to do more multi-channel marketing with Mordic. So, all the logics, as you said in the beginning, you are uh, categories, etc., is already there. You only need to hook up in the right places. So, it's uh, no big deal conceptually in that case. In other cases, you want to come up with new, new campaigns entirely. Um, so to do that, you need a system that is able to deliver print mails. Uh, and not only that, you need basic, basically an application that you can feed into, that has the API. Uh, the provider will have to do production and the logistics of so delivery all the way to the letterbox, the mailbox, um, and probably some sort of invoice. Um, in Germany, we are lucky we have a partner who is doing all that, that's Deutsche Post, and uh, welcome to <laughs> the gentleman over there. Um, they have a product called Print Mail Automation. Um, they have been around for a while, and we, I think we've been working together since well, almost three years now. Um, but with, with Deutsche Post, we can still do Germany only. Uh, we hear the rumors that there's going to be extension. I guess there's political reasons, other reasons that this, this is so slow, but, but we're all hoping to be able to send out to other countries soon and from other countries as well. As of today, we can send from Germany to Germany. But as an example for all this, 
I think it's pretty valuable. Um, it, the, the greatest part about it is that it is very affordable even if you do just one mailing. There's no separate cost, there's no base fee or anything. So this is pretty attractive even at a really low volume. Um, this card we're talking about postcards uh, in, in digital print, but there's other things as well, of course, letters, and you can do mass production that are way cheaper, etc. But I, I don't really want to talk too much about this product, sorry. It's uh, just the point that um, it, this is not rocket science. Uh, other countries, once again, maybe one day towards post. And of course, other providers, other mailing providers, can do the same thing in other countries. Uh, so everybody is free to hook up into Mordic, probably will take a Mordic agency or a certain client that, that is in need of that, um, but that will happen sooner or, or later. Um, what I'd like to do now is give you an example or a brief, brief walkthrough through the Mordic uh, interface and the interface of the email system to show you how easy this really is. First of all, um, this is a channel just like the email, basically. So it's under these channels, we find a uh, Post and hopefully go there. And what we see in, in Deutsche Post is just mapping. It's a template, of course, but it's after all just a mapping of the dynamic fields that are fed into the Deutsche Post system. And when I click there, it's a single sign-on happening, all the projects possible, a lot of metadata here, like, like what sort of production you would you like, etc. But you can also design the postcard in this case online. You can as well upload it from, from InDesign if you like. So uh, it's a front side and back side and you have preview mode where you can see actual data and a lot of places, one of the address field here. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty simple editor. You can yeah, change in images, change text, etc. But of course, you can also change the dynamic fields, like adding a last name here, if not mistaken. Um, and uh, you can shuffle around a lot here, but uh, what the, the data available on the left hand side is really what we fed into the system for more. So now we have a last name. Um, we want to do more, uh, like uh, change the layout, change the images, etc. In this case, the idea is to put a QR code on the postcard, so we need to find some place for it, and we'll yeah, use the cocktail, put it in a different space, and now create a QR code um, from the menu. Of course, a QR code or a barcode or whatever you like um, has to have a certain type and has to have a certain Source and we use the tracking underscore URL that is fed from Mordic, and this will create a barcode for us. So, there it is. Larger. Okay. I guess you get the point. This is a uh, simple editor, does a job, um, can always be uh, nicer, uh, but we do we have some real postcard that we can show around? Very good. Um, yeah, for this example, there are other things that you can do. Um, say this first, and now this thing can be much smarter. You can, for instance, say if this is male, then use that picture. If the person is female, then use a different picture or other rules. If this, then that things. Um, and as I said, you can upload um, from InDesign or, or other things that are prepared maybe from the design agency or others. So, a uh, pretty comprehensive thing. It's already a second generation now. Uh, you, know, you can also manage your assets, and it has really evolved over time, and it's actually fun to work with. You can upload data direct, uh, directly here, or you can take it off from, from Mordic, of course. Um, but in the end, you have the a little bit of metadata, like you see here, different formats to send, uh, different speeds, for instance, as well. 
Um, and then you have the actual template, the way you mark the spots where what is data goes into. So then this is pretty much it already, including a little bit of advanced things. It is growing, well, not every month, but, but time again we get new, new features here, which is really nice. And of course, the biggest part is that uh, in Montic, we don't have to think about it too much once we have a template, then it's just like an email template or an SMS template that we can use in our campaigns. So uh, with campaign actions, of course, where we can now not only say send email or send text message on the left hand side, but uh, we can also add a new action that says send postcards and through Deutsche Post. Where is it? Uh, yeah. Okay, now just regular morning you select the proper template that you like and uh, you're good. And that can of course be done in other cases, not just in campaigns. Cool. Um, yeah, how do we make all this happen? Um, of course it is a plugin in Mordic. I guess. Uh, it can be found on GitHub, and it is 44 already, of course. Uh, in certain SaaS providers, you already find this pre installed. Um, if not, you may want to talk to them if you are in the market, obviously. Um, this plugin connects to Deutsche Post system, of course, you need some credentials there, so you will have a little contract with them, it costs nothing, but, but uh, it, it allows you to allows them to identify your system and the 10,000 postcards that you want to send to the system. Um, in other situations, oh, it's too far maybe. Okay, so big picture, use cases, you probably want to identify the most valuable use cases first and can set up a trial or a, a first campaign with low, low numbers, etc. really easy and uh, with really low cost and see how it goes. And the important part to me is to have measurability, to have some sort of feedback, so the QR codes I find really valuable. Of course, the, the, the QR code Open rates, they are reliable, but they are not, of course, of course uh, complete. So people will be, read the email, by well, small like link, click this little number, like opening the, the email analogy. Um, but with QR codes, I, I find them valuable, and if we have some sort of approach, some sort of call to action that makes it necessary for them to click the QR, QR code, then you will have pretty good visibility, which you never had before in the world of print. And uh, so that's, to me, a perfect example of making a traditional channel much smarter and doing all that good morning. So, for this, thank you very much, and I would like questions. I think that, that like the cases that you presented, uh, from a strategy point of view, like how do you think of like CAC versus LTV? Because you started with fashion with very small tickets, something around like 25 euros, 60 euros for a shoe. Then you went to engineering where we are talking about like 10,000 euros. Yeah. So how would you see the value? Like what is the competitive? When I should suggest to a customer like this is a good channel. This is like this is one question. Mm -hmm. What what is the metric? There? Three, four, five, six times CAC to LTV. That's, yeah. that's one. Uh, second question. Oh, 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 first yeah, 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 I tend to forget all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a good question, but we're not working with that at all. If you look at, I mean, we intentionally use a move from B2C through hybrid to B2B because in our world, B2B is pretty important and this allows us to solve problems. It's not a, a, a math problem, like, like, okay, this is 
worth it. It is something that they want to do and we cannot do uh, another way. So even if they have uh, like, like 500 uh, installed machines or, or customers in, in the German region, they are super happy that they now have a way to send them appropriate communication in a real custom way. So that's valuable and that uh, and the costs that they come up here are pretty irrelevant. Um, on the other hand, when it goes to e-commerce or to B2C in general, but of course e-commerce is the most obvious thing here, um, then you want to do the math. And that's why I always say, okay, please uh, see how it works in, with your clients. In, in fashion, which is of course a very prominent example of B2C, um, Probably, if it's about luxury goods, like, like not 60 euros or 260 euros shoes, it might make much more sense. But we don't have a, a fixed ratio where we said, okay, five times. Uh, so it's a per case thing. You can, like always, it depends also on them doing it right, having the right ideas, having the right words, and all that. So, sorry if I'm answering. But maybe you can answer number two. Okay, the second question is like the data collection and the offline world. Yeah. Uh, how like how do you track the customers from the moment you send them the card mm -hmm. up until they make the action? Mm -hmm. Like how do you collect all of these data points? But then what happens after that? How do you do it? Um, of course, um, there's an easy answer to that. In a multi-channel, omni-channel world, you try to create as many as many touch points that are identifiable as possible, but that's really limited. So, but, but in, in certain points of that journey, um, to that point where they get the email, or where they get the postcard, it is being sent, so you know that. And um, in, in the other hand, something happens. Uh, if it's a return business, then you know what happened. If they do the QR code, then you make the connection. That's pretty much what it's good for, to, to have the connect, to, to be able to identify the, the client later. Um, that's the best you can do. And maybe, uh, maybe we can really stress that now. Returning business is, is a big part of it. Uh, inactive clients, I mean, abandoned car, Depends, but, but inactive clients, it's always a good last shot to pick up. Just a, just a quick question to that, that uh, in the builder, the multi part, mm -hmm. um, you have an action, send Deutsche Post. Yeah. Is there anything like uh, a decision afterwards which also includes that? Because you have a tracking URL in mm -hmm. the builder, that's yeah. well, does it register anything and can you do a decision based on that? Mm -hmm. or the the, the, QR, uh, the QR code goes to a page, and that's the decision. So, so it's a regular page decision? Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, thanks. Any other questions? As you said before, that, um, it's not only in campaigns. Is it, do you have integrated it in points triggers or something as well? Uh, I think in forms. I mean, it could be everywhere, of course, but, but we have it in, in forms as a form action. The other thing that we're thinking about is like you can do segment emails with emails. Uh, it would be nice to do segment postcards. Uh, today, if we want to do mass mailing, we can we do that through campaigns as a workaround, but that's the bigger missing piece. Uh, point triggers, I know you work like with points, that might be a very nice idea, and that's also just a minor thing and easy to implement. By the way, um, I want to thank uh, Adrian Schiff. Uh, from here, who's not here, sadly wasn't able to make it, but their company are not only using the plugin, but they are actively contributing, coming up with good ideas from their own experience. And so I, I love that. We, we did this plugin on our own, but nobody paid us to do that. Uh, we just think it's a cool thing for more. And um, the fact that, that we get really good contribution from the community makes more even better. So that's Really appreciate it. More questions? 
Não, tem até aqui só mais para mandar aqui. 